Evening all, getting organised for another episode of the Mind Lab show. Going to be an exciting one tonight. G'day Lee, welcome. Hi Tyson. Tony, welcome. G'day Michael, good to see you in the feed. Howdy Mick, how you doing? Welcome Corey, good to see you uh, on there again. Timothy, Trevor. Stumpy picks. Uh, we've got Walter on also. So lots and lots of people coming on the feed there now. It's all starting to happen. We're getting ourselves organised. A really big show tonight, guys. Lots and lots of stuff happening. Howdy there, Matthew. G'day, Sarah. G'day, John. Oh, there's people everywhere. It's really great to see. It really makes it well worth... Uh, uh, dropping in uh, and doing this show. I'm glad you're all uh, getting on and enjoying it. Uh, howdy, Russell. Hi, Jonathan. G'day, Steve. Joe. Look, I think we're uh, getting closer to a start. We're not too far away now. I think we'll give it uh, another minute or so. Just put the final touches on here. Okay. Scott, Jeff, howdy Jesse, Jesse and Ben's Technology Channel, welcome, Lauren, you're in, Lyndon's here, I think I'm getting a couple of things, we're just about right to uh, head into tonight's show, just uh, 120 down under, welcome, Rob, Howdy Ross, it's all looking uh, pretty good now. Welcome to the Mind Lab Show, Australia's most informative prospecting live stream. This is the place where you'll get all the tips, tricks and super deals for your next gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. In this episode, we're going to check out the latest store offers from Miners Den. We're going to take a closer look at the Tiger range of digging tools. The great help those will be for you. The Coffee Bush Kid is back with What Have I Found? I'll answer your questions live and give away some fantastic kit to help you in the great outdoors. I'm Gold Digger Dave. Let's get digging. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. That signal so sweet when I hear that beep beep couldn't think of many things better. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. Okay, uh, that's got the opening out of the way and we're going to head straight off and have a bit of a look at the gold price again now. After dipping to less than uh, 2620 at the end of the financial year, the gold price is currently sitting around about, well, 2650 roughly per troy ounce. This is about $17 higher than it was last week. As we saw last week, the gold price or the price of gold over the past six months is up from the start of the year. There's no doubt there'll be some turbulence in the gold market moving forward, but let's hope over the longer term the trend of the first half of 2022 continues and the price of gold moves in the upwards direction. Look, uh, Miners Dead Australia are the events experts, and what a lineup we have for you in July. First off, sees the team uh, heading to Sydney for the Sydney 4x4 show and then off to Adelaide for the Adelaide Caravan and Camping Show. So in Sydney, it's the National 4x4 show in Sydney there. It's at Olympic, Sydney's Olympic Park on Friday the 22nd, Saturday the 23rd and Sunday the 24th of July. Now time on uh, the Friday and Saturday kicks off at 9am, gates will be open. 5 p.m. Uh, that's for the Friday close for the Friday and the Saturday. On the Sunday, it's open from 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. At the gate, uh, there's a number of different passes available for this show, so you can get a three-day bundle. So if you want to do all three days, a three-day bundle will get you uh, uh, what. 
45 bucks will get you out of trouble, I should say. A two-day bundle, uh, well, $35 gets you sorted. If you just want a day pass, 20 bucks is admission for the day. Uh, concession, pensioner, etc., $17. And child under 16 is free with a paying adult. Now, the Adelaide Caravan and Camping Show, it comes up straight after, so I think we finish uh, the uh, Sydney show, then head straight over to set up for Adelaide, which kicks off on Wednesday, the 27th of July, and concludes on the 31st of July. So that's on from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, it's at the Adelaide uh, showgrounds there. At the gate, you're going to be 19 bucks to get you in the door. Uh, concession, 16 bucks, And again, child 16 and under is free. So we'll be at both of those events there. Please uh, make sure you drop in and um, uh, say hello to the team there. We'll have uh, experts from MindLab on the stand to be able to assist you with any of those curly questions. Of course, uh, not only are we attending expos and things, there's a uh, next lot of training is coming up for our Victorian customers, or well, any customers from Miners Den. Uh, it's free training. It's run in Victoria at this time. Uh, it's coming up on in Bendigo on Saturday the 30th and 31st of July. So 9 a.m. we kick off with the uh, SDC session. The 1 p.m. session has the GPZ 7000. Over to the next day, the Sunday, 9 to 12, you can learn how to use your new GPX 6000. Now, it's a little while for the next lot of sessions in New South Wales, but this should give you plenty of time to plan ahead and get Australia's best training on the mid to high range mine lab gold prospecting detectors. The next date's coming up in New South Wales. They're going to be out at Waddle Flat, and that's going to kick off on the uh, 13th of August, uh, 9 a.m. your SDC in the Arvo. We're going to be doing the GPZ 7000. Of course, on Sunday, uh, the 6000 is exactly uh, what we're going to be doing from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. Look, of course, you can book all of these online. You simply head to minusden.com.au, click the training tab, then select the session you'd like to attend and fill in your details. If you're using a free training session, please enter the code free training, just one word or lowercase as we see it there, and next, enter the receipt number from your purchase into the field. Done. You're all booked. And we look forward to catching up with you on the training session. Look, if you bought from elsewhere, please don't despair. Miners Den certified training is still available for a small fee. Um, simply head to minersden.com.au slash training, complete the booking form, and if a payment is required, one of our friendly staff will contact you. So, you're booked too. We look forward to showing you how to use your MindLab machine correctly and Miners Den well, they really are the MindLab experts. So, of course, exclusive to Miners Den also coming up again in July. So it's a big events month. Uh, the Miners Den are running our MindLab Metal Detector Demo Days. Now, look, uh, these have been a great way for budding prospectors or treasure hunters to learn a little more about the hobby and to see what type of equipment is available. These free sessions go through the range of MindLab world leading metal detectors and they give you both the price points and any special features of each unit may have. Once the session has completed at the local park, you'll have a better understanding of the hobby and which machine you may wish to use. A short walk back to the store, we'll throw a sausage on the bar before you and a team of well trained MindLab experts will be available to assist you further. Who knows? We may even get you out and about digging a few holes. The next session for the Miners Den Mine Lab Metal Detector Demo Days is on at our superstores in Adelaide, Bendigo, Mitcham and Penrith in Sydney. Um, uh, well, it's on on Saturday, July the 16th. The sessions kick off around about 10.30am at the store. But look, please turn up about 15 minutes prior to the start. Um, we'll get away on time, head down to the local park and show you what it's all about. To attend, all you need to do is head to minersden.com.au and hit the events tab or use the link that's in the feed. Now look, uh, next up we have Nathan with a quick but very important tech tip. G'day, I'm Nathan from Miners Den and tonight's tech tip on the MineLab show is cleaning the charging port and charging cable on an Equinox 800. Recently we've had a few detectors come in, Equinoxes mainly, come in with um, a bit of, like with a fault of um, not charging. 
um, and the, what it's been every time has been a bit of debris or a bit of gunk on the um, charging ports, mainly on the detector itself. And there was a couple that come in with um, a bit of uh, debris on the charging cable itself. So all it's been is just the tiniest bit of um, just mud or whatnot, um, just on the chart, one of these four charging points here that are down here on the Equinox and or a little bit of debris and whatnot on the charging cable itself. And all I've had to do is just use my fingernail or just a little rag just to clean off the, the um, debris and then the detector charges fine. So it's just a little um, tip to make sure or if you have a fault um, of the detector not charging to give the ch charging port a quick clean before you send it in to me. But anyway, cool. And yeah, that's been a um, tech tip for the Mine Lab show. All right, there was another great tech tip there from Nathan, and we've got more of those coming for you in future weeks on the show. Well, this week we have a fantastic giveaway for a lucky live viewer on both YouTube and Facebook. The Tiger uh, Cub digging tool is a must for those who head out and do a bit of treasure hunting. They're made from stainless steel, they're TIG welded, they're laser cut serrations, uh, all, they're laser cut serrations on them also, and these tools are built to last. Now look, the uh, total length of the tool is 290 millimetres, the blade is around about uh, 80 millimetres at its widest point, and tapers down to 60 millimetres at the beginning of the serrations. Uh, of course, uh, 160 mil is the approximate length of the, the total length of the blade there, 400 grams. Easy. That's our uh, viewer giveaway tonight, um, and it, how do you enter, you might ask, or how do I win? Very, very easy. Make a comment in the feed, and stay tuned. Uh, I'll have a look at the other Tiger tools in the range a little later in the product spotlight. Good luck. Okay, now it's time to talk about a very exciting competition that uh, Miners Den have uh, got up uh, at the moment. Um, the exciting competition coming through has been done once before and it's the Miners Den Cash Bonanza. Okay, we're going to, again, give away uh, Miners Den. We're going to have a huge giveaway and of course you're going to get the goodies. Miners Den Cashback Bonanza is back and look, uh, it's a fairly simple thing for this to how it works. All you need to do is buy any metal detector from Australia's leading outlet, Miners Den Australia, between the 1st of July and the 30th of, 30th of September 2022, and you're automatically in the draw to win the value of your metal detector back in cold, hard cash. No need to call up and get stuffed around trying to understand the offer. This is easy. It's automatic and it's free to enter. That's right, exclusive to Miners Den and applicable to both online and in-store in purchases. Uh, the total prize pool is over $20,000. Okay, there's six prizes in total across three categories. So our categories, Group A has a GPZ 7000, the GPX 6000 and the GPX 5000. So if you buy any one of those detectors over the next three months, you're in the draw automatically to win the total value of your prior detector back. So it's not excluding, it's excluding the accessories, but just the value of the detector. If you paid 6,000 for your detector, you'll get 6,000 back in cash if you're a lucky winner in Group A. Group B also has the SDC 2300, the CTX 3030, the Equinox Series R machines, as well as the Gold Monster and Excalibur. So in that category there, I'm giving away two prizes. So two lucky winners will get the total value of their purchase re funded in cash back to them at the end of this if they're the lucky winners. Of course, uh, there's Group C2, which is just your Vanquish series machines and your GoFind series. If you buy one of those through a Miners Den Mine Lab Metal Detector Superstore, then we have three prizes available there. It's your choice. You use the cash refund for holiday or to get that extra bit of gear you need. No gimmicks or free stuff. That, no gimmicks or free stuff that you must travel hundreds of kilometres to afford to take advantage of the offer, or uh, no need to book a flight to get a so-called free holiday. There's no free holidays really. It's just your detector purchase price back in cash to you. 
of course, as I said, the exclusive additional uh, accessories and things. Now, look, terms and conditions are at minersden.com.au or follow the link in the feed. Look, last time, we, this was just went off, this competition. People were getting in, and uh, the guy managed to score back the full value of his purchase price on his GPZ 7000 when we ran this competition last. Will you be the lucky winner who scores Australia's best mine lab service? They receive, receive the value of your detector purchase back in cash and enjoy more, enjoy finding more after attending a Miner's Den Mine Lab certified training course. Miner's Den Australia, Mine Lab's best value deals. Really, why would you go anywhere else? You get all your bucks back or, well, a chance of getting all your bucks back if you buy through a Miner's Den Mine Lab Metal Detector Superstore. So we're going to have now a quick look at uh, this week's gold discovery. So this week we thought we'd um, take a bit of a look at some of the gold discoveries found by Miner's Den customers around Australia. Our first photo comes from Glenn, who scored himself a very impressive 28.35 grams of the precious metal using his 6,000. Um, that's a great score there. 6,000 is just pulling it out everywhere at the moment. Of course, our next photo again uh, is coming up. It's from Stephen, and he's got a fantastic stash of gold that he also found using what we believe was his GPX 6000. Now, um, it could have uh, come up with that double D coils of that, but um, uh, it is a very, very worthy find. And here's another photo from Stephen, who's obviously been a very busy and lucky prospector out on the gold fields. Um, it's uh, great work there again with the uh, Mine Lab metal detectors. Uh, our next photo from Richard, he's also found him a nice uh, collection of gold nuggets, again with a GPX 6000. Well, well, these next ones, however, our last two photos come from one of our customers who was gold detecting in WA using his GPZ 7000 when he discovered this lovely sized nugget along with a stash of smaller pieces that are nothing to be sneezed at. Here you can also see a larger nugget that he scored uh, came in at 69.42 grams. He'd have to be happy with that. If you've had a great find using your mind lab detector and you'd like to share it with us, make sure you take a photo and share it with us on our Facebook page or just email us a copy, even drop it into one of our Mind Lab stores, Mind Lab Metal Detector Super Stores, and show us your treasure. Okay, speaking of treasure, let's have a look at this week's episode of What Have I Found with the Coffee Bush Kid. G'day folks, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid, and today in What Have I Found, I thought it was time to show you folks these. They're a common little find that you'll find in the gold fields. Some people don't know what they are, but each time you find one, you'll be able to just give a little bit of thought. So here it is. Well, here's our little find. Some of you out there in YouTube land will, uh, will know what these are straight away, but some people might not. These are quite big ones that I found, or more complete ones. Some of the times you'll only get the eyes. Sometimes these circles are actually full and they'll have a one or a two. I think they go up to four or five. Some of them actually have flat plates with the maker's names on them, if you're really lucky to find one like that. But what these things are, they're watch winders. And you go, really? And you go, yes they are because there's a watch and there is a watch winder. So these little loops here actually go on to the watch chain or the fob chain and that's what they're used for. So if we flick that open, so these would have been used for winding the watch. You always had them there, they were always on your chain. They're always a cracking little find. They give a really good signal but that's what they are. They're many different shapes, sizes. You'll get them in parts. You might only get the little circle parts. You usually get the circle and the top piece there. These are iron. So you've, you've also got multiple metals, which will give you a little bit of a funny signal sometimes. But uh, most of the time, you know, they'll give you a signal that you really have to dig. 
And that's what they come up as, little watch winders. So there you have it, a watch winder. And as I said, I thought it was time that you saw those. They're a great little find. They give a real cracking little signal. Always good to find. So, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid, and that's what I found for the Mind Lab Show. Okay, uh, let's uh, have a look what we've got coming up next. Um, we've got a number of offers in our store offers that are finished uh, for the moment with some completely selling out. We still have the following offers that will continue for a while longer. So look, we've got the MyLab GPX 6000 offer, uh, eight grand, and that includes all the standard kit, plus a spare battery, a carry bag, and a 6000 swing arm. Now the 7000's also got a special offer on at the moment, uh, and it's got all the standard kit with either the two coil or the single coil option there. You get a carry bag, a spare battery, and a MindLab skid plate. Uh, we're throwing in a clip on uh, a leather pick holder as well that goes with that unit. Now look, I'm expecting to bring back Coffee Bush Kid Bundle on the Equinox 800 as soon as more stock is available. Look, it is really a fantastic offer and it has led to us running my lab out of stock of their 6 inch coils and their Profine 35s. It just absolutely walked out the door guys. We are bringing it back as soon as uh, my lab can uh, restock the Miner's Den Metal Detector Superstores. Next up, um, after uh, the store offers, I'll go on for a little while, but look, next up, uh, I'd like to introduce you to a character you may see in your local Miner's Den store sometime very soon. So, what I had uh, an interesting time this week, and fortunately, Gold Digger Dave has been able to clone himself and turned up, he turned up, ready to start work in Bendigo this week. Of course, number two here has uh, been out running around with me. I had to get him out and about uh, so that he could actually learn the layout of the town. And here's a few pics from his trips around the local area. Now, I have a number of these clones made and they're on the way to the other Miner's Den stores where they'll commence getting to know their local store and area and prepare for their next assignment. These guys love competitions and giving stuff away. So there's more on this coming up uh, in the next few weeks. But if you happen to be in a store or at some of our upcoming events, number two will be available for selfies. I can see this being a huge amount of fun and you guys are going to get the prizes. So that is uh, number two. He's had a while of a time going around uh, Bendigo and he will certainly be in the stores to chat with you very, very shortly. Let's move straight into this week's product spotlight and it takes us to a look at the Tiger range of digging tools. This range has been designed for the coin and treasure hunter and is made from durable stainless steel. Miners then stock the following tools. So we have the Tiger Coin Popper uh, there, and then uh, of course the Tiger Cub that's a giveaway for tonight. The Tiger Blade is also available, a little bit bigger uh, digging implement. The Tiger XL and the Tiger Digger, both if you uh, can dig some holes, it's great for digging pugs and digs out. Of course, the little one there, the Tiger Snake, is also part of the gear that Miners Den run uh, for you guys. Each of the tools have been designed uh, to help you efficiently extract targets without damaging them from a range of different ground types and environments. Head on over to MinersDen.com or drop into your local store to pick up yours. Okay, it's uh, time now to uh, have a quick look at the Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt photo competition on Facebook. And, well, congratulations firstly to the winner of our June Pay Dirt competition, Kim K, who scored this little pile of yellow. Kim uh, won a $100 gift voucher to be used at any of the Miners Den stores or online. With the June winner announced, that means it's time to kick off July's competition. What it's all about? It's part of the offerings that come when you purchase a bag, tub, or bucket of Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. All you have to do, simple, take a photo of your finds uh, from the pay dirt and post it to our pinned post on the Miners Den Facebook page. Then keep your eye on the socials towards the end of the month to see if you're the lucky winner. A 50 buck voucher to Miners Den is up for grabs. 
as well as this, you may score a collectible or redeemable token or even a mini patch in Australia's richest pay dirt. Gold Digger Day's Gourmet Pay Dirt. It's no ordinary gravel. Look, recently Coffee Bush Kid and I headed out also to do a bit of gold detecting using our 17 inch coils. Check out the extended version that will be up on our YouTube in the next uh, couple of days. Let's have a look how we went when we were out running around with a Coffee Bush Kid. Hey, I got gold fever and you wouldn't believe it I'm out chasing gold and I don't want to leave it This gold detector has got me on the run All around Australia it's got me roaming I find a piece or two that Well, look, we've both uh, found our targets, got five each here We're going to start by checking uh, the couple I've got in front of us here uh, Again, I'm using a 6000 with a 17 inch and Andrew's using the trusty 5000 also with a nugget finder 17 inch coil on it. Let's just take our stick out here, step back a little bit, we'll have a listen. Now these are very faint targets, so some of them are just going to turn into, I'm sure, to be ground noise, but let's have a listen anyway. Now, I think there's a little bit of a change there. That's worth me having a bit of a more investigation. But before I dig it, I'm going to switch off here now. And uh, Coffee Bush Kid, turn your machine on and let's see how you go having a hit at that one in there. Really struggling. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's even a target yet, but um, so let's scrape a little bit away around that little bush here, maybe up in this area here. See if we can't uh, scrape a bit of that back and uh, we'll have another listen to your machine and then we'll confirm it if we've actually got a target. That little bit of bush I think has got to come out there. Unfortunately, if there's another one near it, so it'll grow back. All right, let's have a listen again with uh, what you've got there. Yep. Coffee bush and we'll <laughs> see if we uh, can't get this to come through as a clear target. Okay, look, we've heard that target with the, uh, the, the 5,000. We think we've got something there, and we're certainly getting a good response coming through uh, before on the uh, 6. So let's have a balance that in, make sure it's all right here. Come back over to court, this area again. Now we can hear that coming through quite clearly there. Let's scrape a little bit back. We'll just take a couple inches off the top there and uh, have another listen. It's certainly coming through a lot clearer now. I almost wanted to say sort of somewhere around there. I reckon that's about where it is. Uh, we'll let you scoop some up and see if we can't have another listen. If it's in here and it's a target, it's obviously fairly small. So let's have another listen. That's a good sign, Andrew. The, the sound's disappeared, which means you've got a fair chance you should have it in there. We can definitely hear a little ring there. Yep. That's screaming. That's, that is definitely, I would have to say, it's a target. I'd say it's not in the green scoop. Let's have a look again. That is definitely a target to my way of thinking. <laughs> okay, let's have a look and see how we've gone here. Lead digger Dave. Lead digger Dave, and it's uh, been in there a little while. That is a tiny, tiny piece of lead. We were confident that that target, I was confident there was a target there on the six, uh, but when we ran it over the seven, uh, the 5,000 with the 17 inch Nugget Finder Evo coil on it, uh, in all honesty, we didn't get a peep, really, did no. we? No. Now I'm thinking with that slight warble, it's potentially ground noise again.
I it? might be I might be a little more confident this could actually turn into something, but uh Still maybe sometimes getting it one way, aren't yeah. we? Usually if you get it just one way and you're moving around and the target drops out, usually you can be short and it's probably just a ground noise. I'll give you the chicken stick. Yep. Let's flick on a 6,000 and see if we get any different results. That was actually where I was. Okay. Right there. Let's try you it. You might have snagged another one beside it. Maybe. I'm not hearing anything up that top part, but I'm a little bit interested in down here now. We'll just scrape a little bit off. Maybe that's what you're picking up with uh, one of the edges of your coil, possibly. Yeah. But I think uh, I, I think if you. <laughs> <laughs> We'll try and uh, have a listen again now, and then we'll do another comparison, possibly. That's a target. Let's just flick off and have a listen and see if you can hear it now. So maybe we weren't quite on it. Maybe you were picking it up with the back tip of the coil, possibly. Maybe. You'd want to dig that. You'd want to dig that. It's still fairly faint, but you can hear yeah. how it's defined at each end. Yeah. Just take a tiny bit off the top. Oh, I'm liking the sound of that. That's sounding much better, isn't it? Should we uh, scrape a little bit more off? Yeah. And then we'll have a quick listen, maybe with the... See how we go. If we haven't got it out of the ground, we'll have a listen with the six. Yep. I reckon we can locate this a little easier with uh, yeah. the good old six again. Hopefully, these harder ones sometimes do turn out to be a little piece of gold. You might spend a little bit of time chasing them, but it'll all be worth it if uh, we can see a little bit of yellow shining back at us. Yeah. Well, let you have a crack there, you're right on it there, I think. Beautiful. Yep, I think you've got it in there. Shake it down, because if it's heavy, it'll go to the bottom. We got it. Let's have a look and see. There you go. Once again, it's only a small piece of lead, but in an area that's been worked heavily, the 17-inch uh, coil on the GPX 6000 seems to be coming through with the goods thus far. That's unbelievable. Uh, nice and small, but you can hardly hear that once you got it out of the ground. Yep. Quite often, when you're getting some of these small targets out of the ground, you can actually bury them deeper than what they were buried and makes it a little harder to hear as well. Well, it was a great day out uh, running around with the Coffee Bush Kid. Uh, always enjoy my time uh, hunting, whether we're for coins and relics or for gold. And it's time now for another one of my favourite segments of the week. It's time for me to answer viewer questions. And the first one comes from Alison, who asks, Hi Dave, I see there are three different coils for the SDC 2300. What are the differences between the coils, apart from the prices? Or which one would be good for a first upgrade of the 8-inch coil? Thanks. Hi, Alison. Look, there's three coil sizes available in the Extreme, extreme Range uh, from Coiltech, and they have slightly different uses. Let's have a look at these sizes. Firstly, we'll start off with the 10 by 5 Gold Extreme Coil. Look, this coil is an excellent choice if you are wanting to get into a little extra sensitivity or to work in areas that have a lot of low scrub. The elliptical shape makes it easy to pinpoint uh, when you're trying to recover the target. 
So that's a great coil. The 11 inch round gold extreme coil, uh, this is a great coil if you want to get that little bit better ground coverage and a bit better depth on the larger targets. It'll not be quite as sensitive as a 10 by 5 but still a great option in the Coiltec Gold Extreme range for the SDC 2300. Of course the 14 by 9 is another Coiltec Gold Extreme coil and this is a great size if you want to get that extra bit of ground coverage. Um, look, when searching say for a new patch, the elliptical shape again is great advantage when coming to pinpointing. My preference, if I was going to upgrade, I'd whack on a 10x5 Coiltec Gold Extreme Coil. It's it got extreme sensibility, sensitivity and the ability to get into tight places can be a real help in sniffing out those hard-to-get nuggets. Remember, if it's your first SDC Extreme Coil, then you'll need to pick up the mounting kit as well. That has instructions in it to show you how to fit the coil and all those kind of things. Um, so look, I hope that gives you some idea. I'd be going for a 10 by five, but I think the stores have them in stock. So give a minor stand, my lab, metal detector, super store a call, and we'll get a call out if uh, that's the way you wish to go. Okay, our next question comes from Andrew, who says, uh, G'day Dave, I have a 2300 with absolutely no luck except for lead shots. I've always used the setting numbers on the green one. Should I try more or not? Well, look, Hi Andrew, look the first thing I'd like to check on is uh, whether or not you have done a training session. If not, then a good training course uh, with say the Miners Den certified metal detector training sessions is a must. That'll, that'll help you a lot. You're getting the right idea because you're getting some little bits of lead and stuff, uh, but the next thing we want to look at is the areas where you are working. So have you been searching the old workings, uh, uh, say the mullock heaps and the old surface areas, or have you been more out on the hillsides? The old workings are a great place to start searching because you know that the old timers have found gold there and are sure to have missed some. With the sensitivity settings, number two green is a great place to start out, and that's where I start out when I go prospecting in a spot. Once I've been searching an area for say about five minutes or so, I'll then um, increase the uh, sensitivity up to the number three. So once I turn it up to the number three, I'll then go back out and I'll continue to detect in number three. Look, if the machine's still running stable, then okay, I'm going to increase the sensitivity up to number four. So once I get up to number four, I'll go back out detecting again. But if I'm finding that the machine has become unstable and I'm stopping on too many false signals and things like that, then I'm going to back it back to number three because I want a stable machine. A stable machine is going to make it easy for me to hear the faint interruptions and the faint interruptions are either the smaller objects or stuff that is deeper down. In my experience, both of those I've found more likely to be some gold. There's plenty of gold still in the ground for a 2300 and low and slow is always the go when you're out prospecting. Finding lead shot means you're on the right uh, path, so look, good luck and just keep persevering. It could just be that next hole you would dig that unearths that shiny nugget you're looking for. Of course, I've got a final question tonight, and it comes from Adrian, um, uh, and he's had this question in for a couple of weeks now, so while the, his question um, is why, does there seem to be bigger nuggets in Victoria than all of the other states? Sorry about the delay in getting to answer this question, but I'm still checking the uh, correct information. It's not that there is, seems to be bigger gold in Victoria, it's actually a fact. Throughout recent history, more nuggets over 500 ounces have been found in the central Victorian gold fields than anywhere else in the world. Some estimates even put the figures as high as 80% of nuggets over 500 ounces found right here in the central Victorian goldfields. Look, the reason behind this is because of the uh, geology of the Victorian goldfields. So they have a lot of slate belts running through them, and those slate belts in some cases uh, contain extremely high carbon or carbon rich uh, uh, belts of slate. These are called indicators. Now, the old timers would follow these carbon rich seams until they found a point where they intersect with a quartz reef. At this point, there was large masses of gold formed and over time, weathering caused the gold to break free and large nuggets were revealed. 
And I hope that gives you uh, a general answer to what you're looking for. It's obviously a complex geological question, but there's no doubt the Central Victoria gold fields are still amongst the richest in the world. Okay, now look, it's time to have a look at this week's uh, coin and treasure uh, segment. And there's a couple of stories. So the first one comes from a group of amateur metal detecting prospectors uh, who have discovered a hoard of Viking Age silver coins and jewellery in a field seen southwestern Finland. A hundred coins and 30 silver notches were found that were once used as a means of payment. Twelve of the coins dating from uh, the years 700 to 1000 AD uh, were minted by the Viking king Harald Bluetooth. Well, uh, Harald Bluetooth was obviously ahead of his time. He ruled Denmark and Norway uh, and introduced uh, Christianity to Scandinavia. The rest of the coins cover the period of 250 years, uh, the oldest being a uh, dirham from the Umad Caliphate dating from the 8th century. The coins were found so close to each other, according to archaeologists, that they could have been in the same leather bag. In addition, small Iron Age pottery shards were found, suggesting the site may well have been inhabited. The origin of the silver treasure has not yet been determined, however the researchers believe that it most likely comes from Pomerania, territory of present-day Poland. Okay, the second story that uh, came out this week was uh, a Roman silver coin hoard that had been discovered by Wayne Jones while metal detecting on a pasture field in Flintshire in the UK. The coin hoard contains 13 silver denarii minted between AD 64 and AD 117. The first coin in the hoard is a denarius of the Emperor Nero who ruled between AD 54 and AD 68 and the last is of the, den the denarius of the Emperor Trajan who ruled between AD 98 and AD 117. Now, I'm sure I got that dude's that Emperor's name right but uh, my apologies to him if I was slightly off in my pronunciation. The hoard was probably buried a short time later at around AD 117 to 1125. This coin hoard adds to a growing body of evidence of Roman activity in and around Halicon in Finchshire during the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, which is likely to have been primarily related to lead mining on uh, the Halicon Mountain. Flintshire Museum Service would like to acquire the hoard for their collection following an independent valuation by the Treasure, Treasury Valuation, or Treasure Valuation Committee, I should say. Well, there's been a lot of interesting finds come up there, and uh, to take us to another spot where you could find something interesting, we're going to head towards Croydon or the Golden Gate Goldfields. Croydon is located 1,197 kilometres northwest of Brisbane. The Croydon Goldfields are located 20 kilometres from the town centre. Croydon is part of the Etheridge Goldfield region and includes areas such as Georgetown and Agate Creek. Croydon was a large pastoral holding by Alexander Brown and Margaret Chalmers that covered an area of approximately 5,000 square kilometres when first settled in the 1880s. Gold was discovered in 1885 and by 1887 the town's population had swelled to 7,000. Gold was the main economic production of the area for four decades. During its heyday, Croydon was the fourth largest town in the colony of Queensland. During the Gold Rush era, the population included a number of Chinese. These figures are interesting given that the 1878 Queensland Amendment Act excluded Chinese from the gold fields unless they had made a discovery. A site on the northern outskirts of Croydon contains the remnants of a Chinese settlement in the town. During the greatest mining activity, over a thousand ounces of gold and 800 ounces of silver were taken from the various Croydon mine workings. 
Golden Gate, a former gold mining town, was six kilometres northwest of Croydon. It was one of several mining centres around Croydon that boomed after the Normanton Railway provided a station at Golden Gate. On the outskirts of the town is a mining museum, situated on what was originally the Iguana mine site. Croydon's historic precinct comprises of a number of buildings from the gold rush era. Explore the legacy of Croydon in the unique Savannah Way outback. Start your visit to the Croydon Heritage Precinct at the True Blue Visitor Information Centre. Alright, well, that's another fantastic spot to go hunting for some uh, yellow stuff if you happen to be out that way. Oh, look, thanks again for tuning into the show. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, but look, it's time to see now who tonight's winners are from uh, our giveaway. So somewhere I've got a bit of paper here. Uh, if we look, we've got Timothy A. Timothy on Facebook. Congratulations, you've scored yourself a Tiger Cub digging tool. Uh, we head across to uh, YouTube and Steve Brown. Congratulations, Steve, on YouTube. You are the lucky winner for uh, tonight's uh, giveaway. So, um, yeah, please, let Corey know your details in the feed and we'll get those uh, out to you ASAP. Remember, all you have to do is comment in the feed during the show and that puts you in with a chance to be our lucky live viewer giveaway winner. Okay, it's been another huge show. I've been excited. I've loved having number two in to give me a bit of a hand here, and you'll see them around the stores shortly. Um, but let's have a quick look at uh, what we've got coming up before I sign off. So, episode 89, they keep ticking over and of course I'm going to keep you up to date with all the happenings around the gold fields and in the latest prospecting and treasure hunting news. We're going to get out with the coffee bush kid and go coin and treasure hunting. I'll answer your questions live and we'll have much much more including more news on how you can win with number two and Gold Digger Dave. I'm Gold Digger Dave. Thanks for watching The Mind Lab Show. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, and share. Tune in next week for another episode of The Mind Lab Show.